to the Local Worship Project, episode number five. This is where we train, equip, and unite local worship leaders. My name is Casey Klosek, and if we're meeting for the first time, I'm the founder and creator of the Local Worship Project, and it's because my heartbeat is really in developing leaders and teams in a biblical and practical way, but I understand that I don't know everything about that, and with that need, I, I wanted to share a wealth of knowledge that we have at our disposal as the local church and as the church at large. There are so many worship leaders out there, including yourself, who have talents and skills that we've never really shared with each other. I want to see the local church collaborate and cooperate with each other in a way we never have before. I believe the system that we've been using, building up walls and having our church here and church there, they're done. We need to stop it and we need to move on to something else. We need to work together as the church at large. Now, saying all of that, I want to introduce you to a really amazing guest today. Craig Eckright is somebody I know from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's actually a really instrumental person in my life during a really rough season, um, somewhere where I was just falling away from the faith quite a bit and needed some guidance and some some just tough love, but also just somebody to show me that, that God is gracious and the gospel is greater than anything that I deserve. And through all of that, Craig really just took me under his wing and and led me back into the ministry in a much better way, much healthier way than I've ever been before. Craig's actually doing this with so many other people right now, so many other young worship leaders coming into the ministry. He's going to tell you all about that today. Now, the reason I connected with Craig was because of a Facebook post just talking about the other options we have in today. Now we've got COVID going on. There's a lot of which way do I go? How do I make a decision as a Christian, as um, somebody who is under a specific government? And Craig had a really good post about that that we're going to talk about today in the episode. So sit back, relax, enjoy this episode, and I hope it blesses you. Let's get to it. I want to welcome today to the podcast, Craig Eckright in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, Craig, you and I have gotten to know each other over the last few years, um, just in in various contexts. <laughs> um, I used to be a worship leader out in Fort Wayne a while ago, and I was going through a really, really hard time in my ministry when, um, and in my life, uh, just hitting rock bottom in a lot of ways where, um, where Craig really helped me rediscover my relationship with God in a very intimate way. And, um, and so I'll, ever be, I'll forever be thankful for that for you, Craig. And so I want to start just by thanking you and ho- highlighting that and letting people know what you've done in my life. Um, but I'm really excited to talk with you about just several things that, that you've got going on in your ministry right now. And then a comment that you actually talked about on Facebook a little bit um, through this interview. But before we do that, why don't we go ahead and just let you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you actually work in Fort Wayne, what, what you do over there and just you just take the floor for a little bit. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks, Casey. I appreciate the uh, the encouragement. It was uh, um, I know your pastor had called me up and um, he said I needed to meet you, and we sat down and talked, felt a connection right away. So I'm honored uh, and grateful to you for that comment for your encouragement. Well, I'm in um, New Haven, Indiana, which is a suburb of Fort Wayne. Uh, Fort Wayne being a larger city in our area, and I work at uh, a church called Grace Gathering. Um, which is, um, we say one church, many sites. So we've got four sites right now. Um, and I am the worship director, um, which essentially means I oversee the development and the DNA of worship across all of our sites. And all of our sites are, are unique in some aspect, um, culturally, as well as, uh, you know, music style, that kind of stuff, worship, worship engagement style and age, all those things. So I've been doing that for, um, since 2007. Um, I've been in worship ministry in Fort Wayne area since, uh, 1995 or 96, I think in some capacity, um, uh, as worship director, as technical director, uh, several different things. So, so yeah, and I essentially I'm also um, a, a coach leader. So I'm I lead worship at one of our sites. I'm the primary worship leader for that, and then oversee all the rest of the the worship leaders and teams. So that's me in a nutshell. And I also started um, a worship school a few years ago, which I know we'll maybe talk about a little bit later. But um, that's been super life giving to me. Just since God. Um, since God moving me that direction in the last uh, 
five years. This is our fifth year of worship school. So mm. we've been doing that for five years. That's crazy. I remember the first time you talked to me about the school. I was, um, I, I had no clue, honestly, what you were talking about. You invited me over to the <laughs> church. You showed me some really awesome donuts called Amish Crack. Um, for any of you out there who don't know what that is, um, please look it up. It's not a drug, but it is. Um, and it was amazing. But but I remember going to this little room and um, and just seeing this group of, of young adults and, and teenagers who were just like just sitting there with a book and and ready to go with something that I had no clue about. And it was just a really interesting vibe of, of uh, just trust, I would say, was the first thing that I got there. Just trust mm-hmm. and this relaxing confidence that what they were going to go through was for a purpose. And I hadn't really seen that before with a lot of youth, you know, and a lot of uh, people in that age group. Um, normally it's more of, well, I'm here, you know, I'm going through it, and this is important. I'm either serious about it or I don't really care about it. But it wasn't that confidence in this amping of it. And so it was really cool to see. Um, but before we get into all that school stuff, what I wanted to do was just take a second and talk about a comment that you, uh, you gave us on Facebook, um, the other day. And I remembered reading this and just immediately like, Hey, can you hop on? Let's, let's talk about this. Cause this would be perfect uh, for us to talk about in COVID. There's, there's just been a ton of mix up. Um, I've heard people call it like the great awakening for the church. I've heard people call it the great shakeup for the church, um, and the country and just everybody. Um, and it, it's, um, God's doing something crazy here. Um, and I think that Mm -hmm. some of us lose the sight of, of God actually being in control of this sometimes. And, um, and instead we, we look at these other options of who's actually trying to scheme here instead of saying, well, God is sovereign over this. Um, and it was a great comment. So I'm going to read it real quick and then we'll jump in. It says, um, there has to be an option C a and B do not get, (laughs) do not get us where we need to be. I remember when I first read long ago in a little book called more ready than you realize about this idea that Jesus never engaged in the arguments of a versus B, but always offered an option C. That was somewhere uh, way above the lines between A and B. Our world is entangled in A versus B arguments. Jesus leads us to option C. I know it has to be about love and unity. The enemy of of everything good wants to destroy our sense of love for one another and unity, hope. We've got to see this. Call it what it is and fight against it by demonstrating acts of, that move us into love and unity. But what do I know? <laughs> I know the last part <laughs> yeah, of that's it. pretty good. Yeah. So I've read it in a couple that, weeks. That was pretty good. Yeah, there you go, man. So <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts about what was behind kind of that comment. What was going on in your mind and your heart where you felt led to really just post that? Well, I, I think um, anybody can watch what's been happening in the world lately, whether it's political or um, in our uh, in the tensions racially that are going on, all of that, and see uh, there's just so much polarization, one side and the other. And um, it doesn't even matter if you speak truth. The truth is always turned and twisted, you know, in some capacity to, mm, to yeah. not be truth to someone else. So we've been, as a church, um, just we've been talking about um, how do we move forward in the midst of this, this kind of culture? in specific ways, but also just generally speaking, saying, uh, what did Jesus do? I mean, Jesus was, he's our model for life. And yeah. uh, so how did he do it? And so as we've been talking about this, that that option C quote has just, uh, or that thought has just been coming back to me. And I read this, I think back in 2000. I won't mention the author because the author would put people on an A, B spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. But the, <laughs> people arguing A, B, whether this guy has anything good to say. But anyways, <laughs> he, he, he pointed out that exactly what I just said, where you look at, look at topics, divorce, um, um, paying taxes, uh, whether someone found in adultery should be should be killed, stoned, look at those topics and see how Jesus addressed those. He rarely got into arguments, if ever got into arguments mm. with uh, the people bringing it up. He usually looked at it in a, in a different way. So somebody would ask him a question, A, 
and they would expect him to say, you either agree with me, A, or you go to B, which you don't agree with me. And mm. Jesus would say something to the effect of, I think you've got it all wrong. It's, you're not even, you're not even asking the right question. It's right. option C. So, um, yeah, just over the course of these last many months, I've just been diving in to think, what is, what is option C? And I'll tell you, I, um, personally, again, this is my personal thoughts. I remember the day that I, um, I read um, John chapter, I believe it's John chapter one, Jesus came full of grace and truth. Um, Jesus came full of grace and truth. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. You know, it's kind of like uh, Arnold Palmer. It's half lemonade and, and half tea, iced tea. <laughs> so he's half grace and half truth. Some days he needs to be 25% grace and 75% truth, depending on what he's talking to, talking, who he's talking to. Huh. Um, but I really challenged, I was really challenged. I think God said, no, full of grace and right. full of truth. So he's a hundred percent grace. He's a hundred percent truth. So when he talked to the Pharisees and said, you're a brood of vipers or <laughs> you're whitewashed tombs, there was a hundred percent grace in that. He knew there was a hundred percent grace in that truth. When he talked mm. to the woman at the well about her, uh, having five husbands, uh, 100% grace, 100% truth. And so um, all it seems like all of his options sees when you when you read back through scripture, um, had that kind of at the foundation, full of grace, and, and full of truth. Mm. So the woman caught in in adultery, when uh, they're ready to stone her, <laughs> Jesus, what does Jesus do? He bends down and starts writing in the dirt, right? It's like, yep. <laughs> in the world and, and scholars all over are like, what is he doing? What is he writing? And they, they've got their answers. But in a sense, he, he gave everybody a chance to think. And then he says, let he who cast the first, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Right. And so all of a sudden he's writing in dirt. And as he's writing in the dirt, people start dropping off. Right. Well, that's not me. That's not me. Mm -hmm. So um, this author says that two things, when Jesus talks about that third option, he says, uh, two things are kind of at at the surface. One of them is um, the sense that you're asking the wrong question. So he usually reframes the question. And he mentioned something like, uh, if you're asked the question, are you still drinking too much? Right. Well, you can't answer that question because you're assuming I'm drinking too much. So do I address <laughs> the too much or do I? Do... So, he, so when Jesus addresses the question, it, it's reframing the question. And then the other side of it is the dignity of the person. Hmm. So, uh, truth and grace. So asking the wrong question is you're seeking the, you're seeking the wrong truth and the dignity of the other person is grace. Jesus wants the dignity of the person to remain intact. So he came full of grace and truth. And, and so he, he, he tended to give pictures, tell stories, ask questions, um, all of those things to get at at both of those. So anyways, I, I know you didn't want a sermon from me, but no, no, that's those exactly are the what I want. Are, <laughs> those are the things that are rolling through my head and through my heart and the things that I'm trying to discern. If I'm supposed to live the way Jesus is and somebody brings up a political comment or something, and maybe I agree with it, maybe I don't agree with it. Maybe it's the wrong question to be asking in the first place. How am I going to be like Jesus in that situation where we get to a tr the truth and, right. and we each retain our dignity? And we stay in relationship. We're unified. That's been, for our church, the number one priority as we've walked through COVID, as we've walked through the tension in, in the races, as we draw people together in unity. We've got a multiracial site. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been, uh, you know, it's just been super important to say, let's keep unity. Yeah. We can disagree in a lot of different areas, but unity is going to be really important moving forward. So we're hoping to be um, a light in the darkness in a city on a hill, you know, in this time to help walk our city through uh, what we're what we're dealing with. Yeah. So that's good. And, you know, I I um, I started the project during the beginning of covid because of that. That same thing I was seeing um, before they started the wall started trying to build back up in new ways. Uh, COVID just had this really quick initial hit of just tearing down everything that people were separated by because they desperately needed help to do church. 
because nobody yep. could do it the way they were used to doing it. And um, they needed help from the people they didn't agree with. You know, that church over there is doing live stream. I don't agree with that. You know, the presence of God is not online. Right. Yeah. So you hear that like all the time. But then all of a sudden, that's the only way I can talk to my people. Like that's literally all that I have. So I got to talk to that person or I got to figure it all out on my on my own um, with an area that I've never learned to do. <laughs> you know, So if I want to do it well for my people. I need to suck it up and talk to that other person and get yep. to know them. And then through that, I have the opportunity to see, even though we don't agree on everything, we do agree on the gospel. And we do agree on Jesus and and what he, or what he came to do um, and and what we get to to live like because of that. Um, I don't care if if you guys don't pass a plate or you pass a plate. I don't care if you guys baptize this certain way or at somebody's house or in the church. Um, whatever those other minor things are, um, the gospel we believe in, and mm-hmm. I need your help and you need my help, and we're going to help each other as God's church. Um, uh, that's what initially initially got us going here. And then all these other walls have been trying to build back up throughout COVID. And most of it is, is um, not for comfort. I don't think uh, it's more becoming like this proud thing um, that I've been finding um, with people of just, I've learned enough. Now I'm going to do it. And now I'm getting better than you are. Or I want this many viewers and it, it's getting weird. Um, <laughs> this, this kind of mm-hmm. division that's happening now in the church um, but you guys have four different campuses that you've you've worked with. And one of them is I know before I, I left Indiana, you guys were going through that process of doing one downtown. Is that the one that you're speaking of? That's more of those yeah. multi. Yeah, that's that's really great. Um, we've been finding some of that out here, too, with some of our, our churches that we've been partnering with. And I think we're planning on this Christmas. Hopefully everything goes well doing a Christmas Eve service. We feel like God's leading us to bring all those groups together. Um, to do one thing together. And I think it would just be great for our, our country to see that we do things differently, you know, in God's church and they don't understand why. And that all leads to Jesus. Yeah. Um, yeah. But option C. So with this, um, I think of what is option C, you know, I mean, to some people, this is going to be super obvious, you know, what, what option yeah. C really is in this moment. I mean, option A and B, um, if you're going to look at it from a political standpoint, it's it's uh, right and left, right? Like, that's easy to see. Uh, if you're looking at it from church perspective, you're looking at it at the people who are saying, let's just go back. And the other people who are saying, let's be kind to our neighbors and not go back, right? So both of them are trying to be kind to the neighbor, but in different ways. Um, and those are mm-hmm. kind of the only two options that they see. Um, but so option C, how would, and I'm not having you speak for God, um, or Jesus here, but, but in your mind, did you have any, like with your church and the way that you guys decided to do things, where was the spirit leading option C for you guys is the best way I think I could ask that. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I can't speak for God or Jesus, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to, uh, look to them to figure out what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think our, our search for option C was, uh, you know, really looking at, it's not a, do we start up? Do we not start up to me? Again, it goes back to, to both of those things that I talked about. It's like, are we asking the right question and try to get people to think, what if we asked a different question? What if it's not, are we going back? Yeah. What, what if that's not the question we're supposed to be asking? It's what is, what do our people need right now? Maybe if that's the question. Um, and then the dignity of others thing is real simple. It's like, we need to love one another. If, mm-hmm. if you feel your temperature starting to rise, your internal temperature starting to rise, that should signal to you that there's something not right. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like, if my anger is, is starting to brew over something that's not a righteous you know, injustice, yeah. then that should signal to me, I need to look at something different because, um, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus did not get angry uh, um, for for things that weren't injustice that right. he saw. So, uh, so that's really been kind of the driving force, I think, for us in terms of how to how to come to an option C. And it really has been. I mean, obviously, we have the safety and health of our uh, our people in our community um, to consider at all times, through especially through the COVID stuff and yeah. even through the the racial unrest and. Um, uh, the political thing's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm not a political scientist. Um, I just, you know, I, I'm a follower of Jesus and a worshiper 
of God. And so trying to figure out how to do those things, asking the right questions and loving people for who they are, um, have been the basis for, for all my interactions in those. And honestly, it's really funny that you use Facebook as a, as the quote you read on Facebook for me, because I try to avoid that Facebook (laughs) (laughs) because there's so much of that going on right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Uh, funny though. I mean, so like Facebook, I, I hate Facebook. I was the last person in my family to get on there. (laughs) And I only went on there because when, when uh, my wife and I moved out to Fort Wayne, um, she was like, you have to have social media. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. She, so she created one behind my back. And um, it made me a Facebook account and like signed everybody up. And I was like, okay. So the only thing I ever use it for now is to like promote what this podcast is Um, or to like talk to people. I I talked to some worship groups about like, hey, you know, what have you been struggling with this month? But it's all to try to help and and try to be with people and where they're at. Um, And there's thousands of worship leaders on Facebook and they use that. But but the political stuff. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever I don't think I ever see it. Because I'm, I'm just never on it, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's good for you. I'm just good bad at it, I think. But maybe that's a good thing and blessing in disguise. Um, but yeah. I want to keep going here for you. So okay. as we kind of get uh, kind of moving into this next segment here, I wanted to talk about your school. But right before I did that, I did want to bring up one clarifying thing that I, I think um, – uh, we as a church, sometimes like half the church is in half, right? Maybe it is an AB thing, but um, some churches have a really hard time um, with, uh, with following the Holy Spirit. And I don't mean saying it in a really negative context of people aren't praying or aren't looking at them or anything like that. But, but um, so like me, uh, uh, Southern Baptist, you know, is, is where I was for the first jaunt of my ministry and then um, a different denomination and now another denomination. But all of them seem to be uh, more on the conservative side, I guess, of things where we're using our minds a ton, you know, high education expectations, um, high intuitive. We're teaching classes, mm-hmm. which is great. It's, it's really great. Um, sharpening as a tool and really trying to practice what your your gifts are and those types of things. Um, but sometimes we lose the the emotional and and um, spiritual uh, side of of our relationship with God a lot, especially in these moments. And um, our church, especially, it was funny. We came out of a retreat the month that COVID happened, and our whole thing, a whole premise of the retreat was, we need to really dig into the Spirit of God this year, and we need to press into Him and and ask for opportunity to just follow Him. and And what would He do? How would He open the door for us to do that? And then we need to learn how to, to teach our people to really infuse the spirit in their lives and, and to learn to depend on him. And um, then all of a sudden we came home and that same day we were coming home, they said, hey, everything's closed down and COVID had just hit. And, um, mm-hmm. and so that's all this has been. The last six, seven months um, <laughs> to the time of this recording has just been, where's the spirit leading? And um, it's just been an opportunity to grow in that way. And so some churches struggle with it. There's an opportunity. Um, some churches are just great at it, you know, <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, maybe lack in other areas, but they're great at that um, aspect of it. I think option C, as you're talking about it, you know, it is, what is God saying, you know, and, and being able to to listen to his voice and know his voice. Has there been anything in your life that that's really taught you how to listen for the voice of God above anything else? Like, that's hard when you don't know what you're listening for. Um, has there any, been any experience that's helped you with that? Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. We've got enough time really to dive into all of it, but <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I, I will say this. I'll say in the same way, Jesus came full of grace and truth. He said, true worshipers worship him in spirit mm, and yep. in truth. And for me, it's the same thing. It's, it's both. And like you said, we all have our tendencies towards one or the other. I'm more comfortable with truth or I'm more uh, sensitive to the spirit. I'm more willing to, to seek the spirit. Um, for me, though, it really is. It really boils down to one question that I ask myself most of the time, and it's what if. Hmm. So it's what if what just happened was God trying to get my attention? Hmm. And if it is him trying to get my attention, then it deserves me. It deserves me spending some time diving into what, where's the truth in that. So it can be. Uh, like I wake up in the morning singing a song I haven't sung in years. Um, 
or um, I read I read scripture and all of a sudden I see this picture that I've never seen before. Mm. Um, or I'm having conversations with people and they reference Psalm 95 verse one. And three weeks later, somebody references Psalm 95 verse one, or, you know, something like that. Scripture verses come back. And so it's, it's really, for me, it, it does. And this is what I teach our students is it boils down to you walking like Moses and turning aside and saying, Hey, there's a burning bush. Never seen that before. I got to go <laughs> check it out. Right. So what if? Um, that's been probably the biggest thing for me. And there's, and that's just like getting started. The biggest thing getting started is yeah. asking that question. So that's so good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've got go one of my words it, back but... there. You, you, um, I, I asked that I was kind of hoping you were going to go into a word study there, but on my guitar rack back there, there's actually one word above there that, that you taught me, right? Um, it's Kairos, right? Mm -hmm. So not Kronos, but Kairos. And so the idea there, I think is essentially what you're talking about is, um, yep. you know, this moment, you know, instead of my timeline, so these these moments, defining moments where God's interacting with us, how do we respond in those moments? And, um, yeah, do we see the burning bush? And, oh, that's, that's interesting. It's a that's burning cool. bush. It's really hot outside, so that makes sense, you know? Or <laughs> do yeah. we go, wow, that's really weird. Um, it's burning, but I'm staring at it long enough to realize that it's not actually burning, um, burning up. So I'm going to go over there yeah. and investigate that. And that was really cool. All right. I want to keep moving. You're talking about your students and what you teach them. And I'm kind of talking yeah. about that too. So I want you to talk about that. Um, but you have a school um, in Fort Wayne uh, for worship leaders and developing uh, the next generation of worship leaders is seems to be where it's been based so far, but that could be morphing and changing even as we speak um, with COVID and opportunities mm -hmm. for more people to learn. Um, so with that, it's called Sons and Daughters. You are wearing it proudly, sir. I want you to tell us all about where that came from and how it started, where it's gone since then. Yeah, so um, we call it a worship school, but it really is a um, it's a discipleship journey for a year. So, um, but to get people to understand, you know, uh, a place to start worship school is what it's called. So um, uh, really it started, I... I was in my fifth, early fifties and, and decided I'd kind of plateaued. I wasn't learning any anymore. I felt like I was doing things on my own strength. And so I went back to school myself and I went to, to school through 10,000 fathers, which was based in Atlanta. Um, then, and it was in my first week of school that I really sensed God speaking to me. And, uh, in a very, very clear, specific way, I was wrestling with, um, uh, whether I'd been a good father to my daughters, both of them were just getting ready to leave for school. And I'm like, have I prepared them well mm. to step into what they're going to step into outside of, you know, my protective arms. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was really wrestling with that and really, and, um, in the midst of one of our small groups times, nobody knows what's going on in my head. Uh, we went around and each person in that small group shared an experience that they had had with their father, which was just devastating to me. So I'm in tears, mm. uh, wanting to do nothing but grab these fathers and shake them. Like one of them said, the last thing I remember of my father was him driving up a, to my mom and I on our sidewalk, rolling down the window and staring at us and driving away. I don't remember ever seeing him again wow. and several stories like that. Um, and so I sensed in, in the midst of all of that, God just encouraging me that I'm, I had been a, a great father and telling me I wasn't done yet. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I wasn't having any more children, but as I dove into it and said, what if, what if I am a good father? What if I confidently live the way that God sees me? God said, I'm a good father. I'm going to live like I'm a good father. Um, out of that came sons and daughters. So sons and daughters, I treat these kids like they're my own for a year. We walk together. Um, and I help them, I help them see what a care, what the character and heart of a leader looks like, how to develop that heart for God, um, how to pay attention to the character, because the people that you lead deserve a care, the character and heart of God in you developed in you yeah. and walk through all the skills of what does it look like in many different contexts to lead worship? How do you do that leading worship? And then we say, okay, now that, now that you've uh, got a grasp on how to grow in character and how to grow in skill. How do we invest in other people in the same way? So we do nine months together. 
the first months, the first three months is on heart. Second three months is on skill. Last three months is on uh, development of discipleship tools and multiplication and evangelism. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just been super life giving. We started in 2016. Um, not to get into too much of it, but uh, as soon as I made this decision to agree with God about who I was and step into something that is totally outside my comfort zone, launching a new ministry, um, my daughter was diagnosed with cancer. And mm. so I felt this attack where I had the decision to pull back or to step deeper into what I feel like God called me to. Yeah. And as difficult as it was for those next two, three years, um, I stepped into it and said, what God has spoken, I'm not going to turn aside. I'm going to step into it. And so we start our fifth year. This is probably our first year of having a multicultural group. We've got um, a, a Haitian representative. We have someone from our church downtown who's who's involved in it um, in, in the African-American community. Um, we have an Asian uh, background, a student with an Asian background, and then um, ages 16 and uh, 16 and up is, is kind of what we say. And it's mm. primarily for people who have a gift, a musical gift, and have not had any training, but want really have a heart for God and want to use their gift um, to serve him. So yeah, hopefully that's what you're looking for. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I, I think with that, um, uh, I, I remember when, when everything happened with, with you and your daughter and, and, um, and I, I didn't realize that that was when you were first starting this. Um, the very next the month before we were supposed to start, we got the diagnosis. Yeah, that's crazy. So what I witnessed was like a prelude to it. Um, when yep. I talked about me in that little room with those, <laughs> uh, with those kids in there. Okay, that's that's mm -hmm. so cool. Um, you know, I I was having my devotion today, and I, I was not planning on bringing this up at all. But I've been struggling a lot lately with um, the closer that I walk with God, the more he brings me into difficult scenarios and difficult situations. Um, and I just like writing in my prayer journal today, I was like, God, why is it this way? You know, like just honestly, you know, it's in my heart. This question's just there. I don't understand. Um, and I get, I get some of it. So I get that it's drawing me into a deeper relationship with you. It's building more trust in me, building more confidence in who I am. And when I do the work with you, that you're doing it and all of this stuff, I, I get that. But why is that the method? <laughs> you know? Mm. So why yeah. isn't the methodology more of just when I come to you, I just find joy and peace. Like, why is it you're always got me facing a giant <laughs> in order to find joy and peace? You know, like what's that yeah. about? He's uh, not done with you yet. Oh, man. Yeah. And so it was a great voicing of frustration for me today. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know, that made me think of that. Um, yeah, when he calls you into deeper uh, relationship with him, uh, you find deeper challenges in life that are going to try to pull you away. And, and it, yeah, man, it's so good. Let me tell you, let me tell you this, that one of the stories we use in our, tra in our first track, we, we spend a lot of time talking about identity, like who you really are. Yeah. You're not a singer. You're not a guitar player. You're not a drummer. You're a child of God first. That's where we start. Mm -hmm. And if you can understand that, then we can start talking about your skill as a singer and guitar player. Because when somebody comments on your ability, either positive or negative, it doesn't fluctuate who you are. It doesn't change who you are. Right. Um, you're able to receive those things. And we use, we use um, uh, the story from judges on Gideon as the example that when God spoke words of truth about who Gideon was and said, mighty warrior, when he used the name mighty warrior, Gideon was the smallest kid in the smallest tribe hiding in a cave uh, from the armies. And look what happened to Gideon. I mean, Gideon stepped out in confidence and destroyed armies, this small, tiny little, because he believed he was who God said he was. Yeah. And so it's super important that the largest battles in life are won around your identity. If you can believe you are who God says you are, then you can face things just like Gideon did in battles and still set up a, a shrine, a, the Lord is peace, you know, 
Jehovah Shalom, when he built the altar, the Jehovah Shalom, yeah. in the midst of battle, there is peace. In the midst of struggle, there is peace because I am who God says I am. And mm-hmm. He is who he says he is. I feel like we need to have a whole nother episode about identity. Um, <laughs> gosh, there's so much there. Um, <laughs> I could just keep peppering you with questions about that, yeah. but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, what I will do instead um, it is ask you with us, this sons and daughters, um, that you're doing right now, um, for one, who can enroll when is a good time to enroll if, if they want to do that. And, um, is there anything in the future for this? Yep. Yep. So, uh, real quickly, it's right now it's pretty localized in the Fort Wayne area. We, we do draw a few students from lower Michigan. Um, we had a, a student from, uh, Eastern Illinois, and we've had some from Western Ohio. <laughs> yeah. So it's really localized in the Northeast Indiana area. But there's two kinds of students we're looking for. We're looking for young, gifted um, musicians, vocalists who have a heart for God and want to lead other people and want to see what it's like to lead other people, but, but may still be in school. Mm-hmm. And so they can't go to school and they want to test the waters to see, is this something I think I can do in the future? Is this something God's gifted me? to do in the future. So there's that, um, 16 and up, I would say in that regard, they don't have education in worship, but they want to begin a good foundation of yeah. worship leadership. And we're looking for people like the people watching this podcast to become students who say, this is my passion. I want to invest in the next generation of leaders, but I have no idea how to do that. Mm-hmm. So we invite them to come in for a year to walk with us and it's a small number of people that we work with. I have eight students this year and 10 team members. So it's better than a one-to-one ratio because wow. it's life on life. It's not sitting in a classroom all day long and then taking tests. Um, so we invite them to come in walk with us for a year. What works for you in your context? What doesn't? We want to help you do this in your own context to raise up the next generation, generation of leaders where you're at. So um, we always begin. We follow the school year the academic school year. So we begin in September, we're done in May. Um, and the commitment level is three weekends. We do three weekends away and, um, every, everything else we do through zoom one hour a week. We've been doing it for five years. So <laughs> <laughs> zoom is what we use. So zoom week. wasn't the necessity of COVID hitting you guys. You were already doing that. We were already doing it. So my students came after being in school all week long on zoom came to our huddle and zoom. Hey, you can't be tired of zoom because we were doing it before you would, <laughs> your school went to it. <laughs> yeah. That is a thing. Zoom fatigue is real. Um, it is. Gosh. Yeah. I just want to be with somebody face to face, but <laughs> I get that. And then as far as the future goes, I didn't mention that we yes. are looking into an online version. So we've recorded all of our teachings from previous, um, immersion weekends and we're just trying to figure out what a package looks like and, and how we're able to do it. So the school is essentially me and another couple. So there's just three of us kind of leading it plus former students. So my team is made up of former students who have said, hey, you taught me the tools. Mm-hmm. And the only place I have right now to work those out is here. So can I come back and walk with you guys? So we have year one students and we have year two students, year three students, year four students. I even have a year five student this year who's been with me for five years and he's kind of leading things for me for the most wow. part. So that's yeah. incredible. And, and so right now we're talking in uh, October of 2020. So we're right and still going through COVID and everything right now. But if you're listening to this and it's after, so if it's maybe 2022 or something like that, um, wherever this is, um, it may already be up. If you're actively listening right now in the year of 2020, at the end of the year, it's not up right now online, but, but be on the lookout for it. And I'll redo links um, if that happens and when that happens um, so that you guys yeah. can just jump in that on the, the links below. But but that's how we'll operate with that. Craig, I'm just curious, are there any final thoughts that you would have any words of encouragement for these worship leaders who are going through COVID, who are experiencing all of this um, over months and months of enduring this this crazy time? Um, how would you encourage them as we, we end the podcast today? Yeah, that's good. I think, uh, I think the um, the greatest thing that has been helpful to me is realizing that my heart, my spirit, um, my skill, all of those things are, I have to pay attention to those things. Um, I remember, you know, when this all started happening, I was 24 seven 
you know, all my mind was the people, the people, the people, the people, and forgetting that I've got, I've got to follow Jesus's model of returning to the father and helping him speak those words of identity and purpose to me over and over and over again. So in the midst of all these struggles, that'd be the first thing, take care of your heart and your soul as you're pursuing everything with a good heart towards your people, you know, wanting to, to lead your people. Well, you, you, your health is, is important. Um, and then the other thing is just keeping the, the main thing, the main thing. It's like, I want people to engage with God. I, it's not about, it's not about whether, our production is perfect. It's not about whether that light goes off at the right time. It's all about people's hearts engaging with God. I mean, I'm not telling you guys anything you don't already know, but we sometimes slip and think that the things that are really important are not the things that are really important. Right. Yeah. In fact, it's, it's kind of uh, the human condition a little bit, right? <laughs> our mm -hmm. wisdom versus God's. Oh man. Yeah. So when it comes to all that, I, I just want to thank you again uh, for, for coming on on the podcast and sharing a bit of your heart and sharing your ministry that you have with other people. Uh, we do something on here. We pray before we, we end the podcast. Um, no, it's a little weird for some some listeners, but, but we do that um, because that's where we're trying to start is with our heart. We're trying to remember our identity and, and, um, and just <laughs> ask God to bless everything that comes out of this. So um, if you would pray with me, Craig, we're going to go ahead and end our time together for today. Right. Absolutely. Heavenly Father, I just want to come to you today and I want to thank you so much for Craig. I want to thank you for his ministry at his church um, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I want to thank you for Grace Gathering and just everything that they do in their communities around them. Um, I pray that you would just bless his ministry in the church, that you would uh, bless his family at home um, and his family who are in school. And um, I pray that you would bless his family who he's been spending time with uh, through the sons and daughters that you have called him to. Um, Father, I thank you for the affirmation that you've given him of this uh, very specific ministry um, in his life. And I, I just pray that you would just continue to bless it and continue to rear up uh, young men and women who, who love you and are rooted in strong foundation of who they are uh, because of Jesus. I pray that, um, that our time of worship would just be enhanced um, because we have people who are truly trying to lead people into your presence uh, for you and for your glory to minister to your heart and to spend time with you as your bride. I pray that you would just bless these young leaders who are there right now and any young leader who might join um, in the same type of thing or be inspired to to take up uh, more responsibility with leading worship in their local churches because of this. So I pray my blessings on on um, on Craig today, and I pray that, that you would just keep him strong in the faith as we keep marching through this time of COVID. We love you. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Hey, I just want to say thank you again to Craig for coming on this episode. So much fun talking to you again, Craig, and being able to talk about your passion, uh, the ministry you have, and then that great lesson for us in understanding the heart of Christ and, and what he might do in this situation, how that could challenge us in the future moving forward. What I would love to do right now is just ask you and invite you, if this has been a blessing to you, please give us a like, please give us a subscribe and share this with other people. We're trying to get this project out to as many people as possible. This is kind of a once a month thing right now. There's so much going on in life that that's all that I can handle. Um, so if you could do that, that would be really great. YouTube shares things that we like and they don't share things that we don't like. So um, please help our channel out with doing that. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I just want to encourage you today that God's got a plan with um, where we're going, the direction that we're heading. And God is sovereign over every situation, including this COVID-19. And when it comes to learning how to lead worship well, um, I just want to encourage you again. Craig is a great person to interact with. Please make sure you check out the links that we have below on how to contact him and how to get involved in his training. Love you guys, and I will see you in the next episode.